lost and you're free. Just follow me. And you'll see you and me. It's so good to be. Inside and down, come with me. Come on, see what's done, what's still to be done. The world is my playground, and the wind is my song. I believe in truth, love, and the freedom. I raise it all, but stay with none for long. Yeah. It's off to picturesque Toko tonight. Well, look at how the village is making out in these hard times and what promise there is for the future. Another scenic excursion takes us to the river's estate in Diego Martin and that historic water wheel, so much a part of the economy of early Trinidad. We are also going to look at a new and fascinating water sport called kayaking and which is gaining increasing popularity in TNT. So all aboard then, for our journey, cross country. And foot loose and free. Just follow me. Picture this. Angry waters blasting against the headland. Spray splashing high over rock and lighthouse, shrouding a whole village in a fine powdery mist. What place is this we speak of? Why, the most northeasterly and one of our most picturesque villages, Toko. Toko has always held a fascination for me. I remember as a boy spending holidays with relatives in the district. I was always captivated by the large expanses of greenery, the ruggedness of the terrain, the quiet little streams where we used to catch mullets, the abundance of fruit trees, birds. But most of all, I was captivated by the seas, the majestic seas in its many moods. But, that was many moons ago, as they say. So not being able to resist the law of those memories, I decided to retrace my steps and new acquaintances with the talk I once knew. Would it be the same? No, I wouldn't expect that, because time always brings change. Anyhow, here I am in Toko today, and the headland I referred to earlier is Punta Galera. And turning from the mist and spray of Point Galera, we can see the village center, which lies about two miles to the west. It was here. In this area, in 1631, as the story goes, that an English force under one Sir Henry Colt sneaked ashore unknown to the then Spanish authorities and tried to found a settlement. They were unsuccessful. For, as the story goes, the Dutch chased them out. Then the Spaniards expelled the Dutch. The French came as early settlers, but the British eventually ruled. A great number of Amerindians seemed to have lived in this area. And these native people, thought to be Caribs, are the ones credited with giving the name Toko to the area. But the meaning of the word Toko is still not clear. Incidentally, in the 18th century, a group of Capuchin priests from Spain came on the scene. 
and founded a mission a little to the west of where the village center is today. The mission was for the conversion of the Amerindians. Today, this area is known as Mission Village. A decisive factor in the development of Toko came later when a cedular encouraging Caribbean French immigrants settled in Trinidad came into effect. These early settlers could not have found the soil suitable for sugar cane, for an inventory of 1797 showed that there was just one sugar mill in the area. Instead, it was cotton, which seemed to be the major crop. Since there were as many as 59 cotton mills at Toko up to that time. Can you imagine this? In 1818, the district received around the island steamer service from Governor Ralph Woodford. And as a result, the village prospered. The emergence of Toko meant more official attention. It was no surprise when the Catholic Church made it a parish in 1830. Toko was fast becoming a prominent district. And as it moved towards the 1880s, its chief produce was no longer cotton, but cocoa and coffee. There was considerable interchange between Toko and Tobago because Tobago was near and a port of call for the island steamer from Toko. Who knows? We may yet one day see that much talked about ferry service from Toko to Tobago become a reality. After all, if they had it then, why not now in this day and age? But to get back to the labor situation, a large percentage of the Toko labor force came from Tobago. So much so that around the 1880s, Toko was populated almost entirely by Tobagonians. At this point, let me digress for a moment and tell you about a Tobago slave who swam to Toko in his bid for freedom. His name was Sandy, and it happened way back in 1770 during a slave revolt. This young Coromantine from Ghana swam the 22 miles channel between Tobago and Trinidad, a feat that has only recently been replicated and with help and under modern conditions. So now you know the stuff Tobago people are made of, eh? <laughs> but to get back to my Toko story, the emergence of the district as an important village can be gauged for the fact that it received one of the early schools under Lord Harris's ward system. It was as early as 1862 when headmaster Arthur Taylor opened the school with 40 pupils on roll. Not far from the school was the landing place or depot for the ferry, a site marked today by this little pier at the end of the Toko Depot Road. Here was where the steamer approached. And sure enough, when people were landing, the police had to be on hand to see that all went well. So the little police station was placed just next to the depot on a gentle rise. It still stands there today. The Toko Road from San Grande was completed by this time. And by 1930, the road went into use and ended Toko's isolation by land from the rest of the island. 
it also ended Toko's dependence on Tobago. All of this was yesterday. Today though, Toko, rocky, rugged, hilly, and green, is among the more attractive villages in Trinidad. The scene today is one of well-paved, clean roads, numerous roadside shops and snackets, and the perch on the hills, attractive holiday homes. The village gives an impression of being very compact, although it is spread over a wide area. On weekends, Holiday makers are everywhere, except for those areas in the north. Toko's beaches are really little sandy coves on a shoreline that is continually being eroded by the tide, especially on the eastern Atlantic side. One thing I have noticed is that the people here seem as self-reliant as they have always been. I use the word seem because this might not quite be so. For you see, agriculture in this once green and productive region has come almost to a standstill. The young workers who are not employed out of the village turn to many casual government projects for sustenance. There's a ray of help in the offing with the development of self-help cottage industries geared to export niche markets. Yet, with time comes changes. I was delighted to see this at Salidia, a startling sight for anyone coming around the sharp tree lined corner for the first time. Somehow, despite its problems, I get the impression that Toko is still vibrant and exciting and even prosperous to some extent. Indeed, standing at Punta Galera and looking towards this pretty little village, one feels certain that it will meet the challenges of time and tide. And when development comes, as surely it must come, chiefly in the tourism area, <laughs>